you look amazing. Go on, you old sweet talker, you. Where is she? Oh, in the bathroom again. I think she's a little nervous. Oh. Well, you'll see. She's amazing. Even you will love her. Hey, perfect. If I'm parking right around the corner. Oh, how lucky. Paul, this is Norman. Norman, Paul. Hey. Pleasure. So this is the famous writer. And Paul, the... The... The lucky one. Oh. <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh. Hey, Paula. This is Norma. Hi, Paula. Oh, it's so wonderful to finally meet you. Norman has told me so much about you. <laughs> Excuse me? Great, Paula. I'm also delighted. Oh, and here comes number four. Paula, this is Paul. <laughs> oh, how charming. <laughs> so, let's stop them, right? Yeah, come on. Hey, can it be a Volvo? Mind if I take a look? Yes, oh, Paul, not again. Ah, this looks to be an old timer, though. 70s? Mid 80s, actually. Still rolling, though. Not bad. You must have taken good care. It's easier with cars. Oh, you're right. It survived us without any problems, even though we had it before we got together. That's true. I bought it when I was with the daughter of our sport instructor, you know, with the fat one. <laughs> but still, I really wanted to make the swim team. <laughs> Shame I got in your way. Otherwise, you might have been an Olympic champion. Get out of here. You were high school sweethearts? Oh, I didn't know that. When was that? Like 15 years ago? It seems like forever. But it was on and off for a while. For instance, at one time when Norma decided she wanted to change the physics course from one day to the next. That was great timing. Right in the middle of qualifications. Really, Norma? I didn't know you were into science once. Oh, come on, you never noticed how well I can follow your lap slang? Uh, don't tell me you're a scientist, are you? A uh, physicist, actually. I'm a Schrodinger fellow at the LIT. And of course, you know how multi-talented you are. It's one of my favorite things about you. Mm, that gets her purring. Uh, that's the dude with the cat, right? Yes, Norman, the dude with the cat. <laughs> and you really should be thanking me. Without me, you'd most probably have arthritis or God knows what by now. <laughs> wow, Paul, really? At the LIT? I can't believe that. You didn't say a word, Norman. What, was I supposed to do a full investigation about my ex's new boyfriend? I thought that's why we're here today, to get to know each other and all that. Well, what's so interesting about that? Science, buddy. That's her favorite topic. And you are precisely the kind of prey that my lovely lab rat yeah, hunts. Yes, joke all you like. <laughs> well, I'm also in research. I did my PhD in electrical engineering with a specialization on ion implantation in solid state matter. And actually, I've always wanted to get some kind of cooperation started with the LIT. Ion implantation, that's very interesting. Uh, where is it that you work? Come on, please, guys, let's not talk about work. We're already half asleep here. By the way, where's the waiter? Oh, he's probably asleep, too. Um, do you know that, what you're drinking, honey? Ah, yes. Can I take a look? Well, if you ask me, I'd go ahead and order a round of vodka lemon. Icebreaker, so to say. And the, the vodka here is simply legendary. You still drink that? Isn't it about time to grow up? <laughs> what are you having, Paula? Uh, I think I'm gonna go for a peach lemonade. Yeah, sounds refreshing. Yeah, that sounds good. Good evening. Good morning. Have you decided yet? Sure. Uh, two peach lemonades, uh, Kiroyal and uh, vodka lemon, please. Of course, be right back. Thank you. Am I the only one who wants to have some fun tonight? Hey, slow down a bit, okay? Uh, so tell me, how did the two of you meet? <laughs> well, actually, Norma published my PhD thesis. Mm. And it must have made quite the impression on her, since I found an invitation for dinner in it. Oh, how romantic! Did you hear that, Norman? Romantic? Never heard of the concept. <laughs> But science always gets you going, right? But by now, I even understand why. <laughs> oh, that's enough. <laughs> uh, so, Paul, uh, what exactly is your field of research? I'd very much like to know. Quantum physics, of course. Oh, so the stuff nobody understands. <laughs> maybe you. I, for example, know that thanks to Paul, the effect, I cannot be in the kitchen or on the balcony at the same time, right? Or that my body holds the thousands of small sonar conductors, right? Oh, uh, Paul, the effect. Um, actually, it's <laughs> semi. Conductors. <laughs> but not too bad, Norma. You're getting pretty close to understanding the basic concepts of quantum mechanics. Semiconductors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, semiconductors. And there are billions of them, but in your mobile phone, not in your body. Though, maybe there are. 
After all, I'm only an amateur gynecologist. <laughs> well, listen to Appreciate that. that. <laughs> so what? A man with a passion. And what are you working on right now, Paul? Uh, basically, faster and more efficient methods for digital data transfer. So, without the usual heat dissipation and massive energy loss from the copper wires. Oh, how visionary! But based on what? A silicone, right? Almost. Silicon. Or for non-physicists, simply sand. It's the main ingredient for every microprocessor, so it's a good place to start. And it's a semiconductor, so it either conducts or it doesn't. It's either one or zero. I know that might sound complicated. Not at all. Silicone implants. <laughs> it sounds a lot more interesting. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> well, we both know that the reality is a little less exciting, right? Thank goodness. Can we finally talk about something else? Um, when did it click the first time between you, Paula? Oh, great. Is that really necessary? <laughs> yes, it really is. Hold on tight. Well, here we go again. <laughs> so, uh, I was doing mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on him. Wait, what? Here you go, the Coroyan. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. The vodka lemon. Wonderful, the strong stuff over here. No, no, don't change the topic. Um, so what happened? Two times sex on the beach. Uh, sorry, sex on the what? Oh, sex on the beach. Hello there. You two get straight down to business, don't you? <laughs> um, we ordered peach lemonade, actually. I have to drive later. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. I won't change that to uh, me. Hold on, hold on. No problem. I'll take yours as well, Paul. Um, to our beginnings. Sex on the beach is kind of fitting anyway, hmm? <laughs> um, in that case, would you please bring me a tonic? Oh, of course, sir. <clears throat> well then, for all ears. Ah, uh, well, we were both training for the triathlon, and back then the two of us didn't know each other. So, when I jumped into the water, I realized that the guy next to me was having a cramp and going down. <laughs> Luckily, I have my yearly first aid training for my laboratory work. Nice job, Norm. Norm. Well, well, it was fucking cold that day. And I had just had bronchitis two weeks before, so... It was a blessing in disguise, oh, wasn't it? Oh, what a wonderful <laughs> story. I can't imagine it so well. You, breathless, in the arms of a beautiful stranger. <sighs> anyway, it's nice to hear that you two are so sportive together. I just started jogging again, too. It's a perfect contrast to the sterile surroundings of my clean room work. I'm a fresh air, sweat, aching muscles, it's kind of Oh, wow, you have a clean room? I didn't know that. Why do you need that for your silicon research? Um, nanotechnology, actually. My ultimate research goal is to create a silicon laser, or a communication on a chip using light, actually. It's fast and ultimately good for the environment. Uh, wow, a silicon laser, not too shabby. <laughs> the problem is that silicon is a very bad light emitter. Um, but I want to change that, which is why I am researching quantum dots out of germanium that I grow epitaxially on silicon wafers in the clean room. Well, good luck with that then. I wanted to build a quantum computer once too. <laughs> well, all I do now, day in, day out, is to shoot ions at crystal structures. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Such implantation could be worth a shot with the dots. Oh, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to discourage you. Please go on. Guys, guys, come on. Can't we at least order? And what would be the use in that? Listen, let me explain. So first, I evaporate a very exact amount of silicon and germanium atoms on the silicon substrate using my molecular beam epitaxy system. I use germanium because silicon and germanium have a very similar type of crystallitis structure. But in the case of germanium, the distance between the atoms or the lattice constant is a little bit larger. Oh, 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 achtung, achtung. Germanium. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm sorry. Therefore, the germanium, in order to fit the crystal lattice structure of the silicon substrate, have to move a little bit closer together. And the great thing is, if you get enough germanium atoms on the surface, then the surface of the germanium layer actually increases, and I have my quantum dot. Only about one nanometer high. That's, that's fascinating. But how is this dot useful for your silicon laser? This is what I want to find out. All right, that's enough, Obi-Wan. Enough with the lasering. Oh, my eyes is already broken. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well then, a toast. To new inventions, my dears. Thanks, honey. This dinner really was a great idea. A dinner where? Cheers. Mm. Salut. Yeah. yeah. And now, food. Mm. You know what you're having, yeah. Mm, difficult. Norman, you've been here before. Can you suggest anything? Well, the bread's delicious. 
Maybe you choose something, darling. You're better at that sort of thing, hmm? Paula? So why wouldn't you implant some additional heavy ions into the quantum dots? Me? Will you look at me again then? Uh, what do you mean, Paula? Of course! I know where you're stuck. You do? Yes, I do. They do. Your problem is this. The silicon and the germanium are not only indirect semiconductors. But they also have a band offset. Exactly, of type 2. So the electrons are in the silicon. And they can't recombine with the holes in the germanium layer. And this is why the damn Heisenberg's uncertainty principle doesn't work here. And the silicon and the quantum dots do not emit light. And that's exactly my problem. Yeah, I know, I know. But... But what? What are you doing, Paul? Have you decided yet? What? <laughs> what I can serve you? Crystal structures. I don't understand. Neither do I. Maybe you? M me neither. Structures. You? No, no. What I can serve you. Oh, just bring us some appetizers, all right? Of course, sir. And for your wife. Uh, what? Wait, what? Just get lost. And bring another drink. You have to. Well, we simply have to add some additional heavy atoms into the quantum dot crystal structures. Yes. Yeah, we should do that. Should we do that? I I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't understand. Look, Me look. Me neither. Here. What the fuck is going on here? Get your hands off my girl. And you say something. Why should I? I'm having a splendid time. All right, I've had enough of this. And I am fucking hungry. Oh, me too, darling. So you really have no idea? Apparently not. How close you are to the solution. For the gentleman that left. Really? Yes, really. I truly am sorry. For what? Well, the thing with the laser. Oh, I see you still don't get it, do you? I'm sorry, but you are simply wonderful. Do you know that? <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Don't you agree? Oh, oh, oh. oh. You're not normal. <laughs> Et voila! This is exactly what I mean. Look, thanks, Norma. Huh? Here. Additional atoms? Exactly. Due to the additional implanted atom, the situation in the dot lettuce becomes even tighter. And because of the amorphization due to the implantation, even more chaotic. A single atom will always find a place, like a point defect. Is everything okay, Mrs... Uh, yes, everything is okay, thank the, you. The bathrooms are over there, if Kind you... of you, thank you. So, Paul, the additional atom is gonna get refreshed and Point defects, to... that's exactly the thing. So, the additional atom acts as an intentionally placed defect in the quantum dot, and the electrons will want to tunnel to such a deep trap all by themselves. Ta-da! The electrons are tunneling, squeezed to the defect trap. The uncertainty principle works and the silicon finally emits light. Well, congratulations from my side. I'm gonna leave my deep trap, and you can tunnel your electrons into someone else, you asshole. Uh, car keys. So here. I know very well what semiconductors are, you lab rat. Um, actually, it's semiconductors. Never mind. That was something, wasn't it? Indeed, it really was. How long has it been like that? What do you mean? Well, the thing with the laser. How long have oh. you been working on it? Oh, three or four years, I'm sure. Oh, wow. And now you're almost done. I mean, you just have to play around with the LED development, little nano mirrors for the resonators, and clean room processing. And your laser is finally... Our laser. What a lovely evening, Paul. Yeah, it certainly has been. Mm -hmm. This was a great idea of Norman to have this dinner. Where is he, by the way? I, I don't know. I, I think he said he was hungry. What about you? What do you mean? Are you hungry? Not really. Well... We could get out of here before the, the others get back. That's a good idea, but where to? Hmm. You know, the clean room around here somewhere. Ooh, Heisenberg. Mm -hmm.